So over the last year, I got to work as a marine biologist and as a scuba instructor for a small marine conservation nonprofit located on a small island in the Caribbean, and it was a dream job. I got to swim with dolphins, swim with whale sharks, and do hands-on conservation on coral reefs every day and get paid for it and it was absolutely amazing. And I just finished up that job just a few weeks ago and it was absolutely amazing, but there were definitely some huge drawbacks that I definitely want to acknowledge for someone interested in a job like this. So in this first video, I'm gonna be talking about all the hard stuff. I'm gonna be talking about all the cons and drawbacks of this experience, despite it being an absolutely amazing one and being a true dream job for me. And a lot of people that message me looking for a similar job like like this. The second video is going to be talking all about the pros and then the last video is going to be talking about all my biggest takeaways from this experience. So while watching this video definitely feel free to skip around or you can skip over to the other videos if that's what you're interested in. But with all that being said, let's actually get started with the content of this first video. So if you're new here, my name's Eli and I am a marine biologist, I'm a scuba instructor, and what led me to this role and what it is. So I basically did an internship about five years ago at this conservation organization and I learned a whole lot about marine conservation, about scuba diving, and I loved the experience so much that I decided to come back a second time to do a second internship with them. And once I finished that internship, I did a dive master course and then an instructor course in the dive shop that's connected to that conservation organization. And then at the end of all of that training, I was in the right place at the right time and there was a job that popped up and I was able to take it. So what the job actually was and what this organization really looked like was basically the organization functions on a marine conservation internship. It's a four week program and there are three to four staff members at this organization that help teach the entire thing. So throughout the four weeks that we have the interns there, we teach them everything about species identification for all of the things on the reef, as well as biology for some of the major topics within marine biology. So we teach them this in the classroom and then we would teach it online, or online. We would teach it on the reef underwater via scuba diving as well. So lots of diving, but also a decent amount of office time for this job. So any given day, I would be spending my mornings doing two dives out in the water, teaching students and leading them on um, dives and teaching them things. Or I would be in the office doing lectures and teaching, or I would be in the office doing my own work aside because I also happen to be a social media coordinator for this organization as well. So I was in charge of all the Instagram accounts as well as the YouTube channel posting Instagram every day and then YouTube every two weeks. So that was basically, I was doing one of those three things in the water, in the classroom or teaching, in the morning or afternoon every day. And I worked Monday through Saturday doing this. So some of the cons of this dream job. This is so important if you're interested in a job like this to really pay attention to these cons because they are not that unlikely for other similar types of jobs, especially ones that are very small and ones that are in the diving industry. So one of the first cons that I have here is that the pay for this type of job, it is no secret in the marine conservation industry, in the diving industry, that it is minimal. And that was definitely still true for this role as well. So the pay wasn't absolutely horrible. I wasn't struggling to make ends meet, but it was not phenomenal. You have to expect when you're moving to a place similar to um, this organization where it's located on a small kind of rural uh, island in the middle of the Caribbean, the wages around here are also a lot lower. So the wage for the actual job is about what you would expect for a similar type of job within the community. So you also have to acknowledge that the cost of living in an area like this is much lower as well. So that kind of evens out, although you just can't expect a whole lot of money to come along with something like this. The next con on here is that there were extremely long hours in this job. I worked six days a week and normally my day was nine to five. Although if I had a morning boat, it would be starting at 6.30 and then it would still end around five o'clock. So this was a lot of work and a lot of days I would pass out 
being completely exhausted, especially if I had been on multiple boats throughout the week. It was a lot of work and a lot of time. I only have one day off each week, so I treasure that day with all of my love in my heart. <laughs> and I take advantage of it to the greatest extent possible. And sometimes even I had texts or some kind of small thing that related to work, so I did have to do a little bit of work on Sundays too, but um, yeah, so there's a lot of work that came along with this and it was really hard at times. Um, so definitely something to be aware of if you're interested in a similar kind of job. The next con on here is that I had to work holidays. I, this past year, actually had to work Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, Thanksgiving, New Year's Eve, and New Year's Day. <laughs> so basically all the major holidays I had to work and it wasn't that crazy that I was doing that because uh, many other people were also working those days um, for similar organizations around our island. So for my case, I was working with an internship program, so the internship just ran through those holidays, so we had to work them, uh, which was a very extremely <laughs> difficult thing for me. I have never spent uh, the major holidays away from my family before and not have the opportunity to go back to them but it was a part of the job that I knew about when I signed up for it and I had to deal with that um, when I got to it. It was a really difficult thing, but um, something that I at least, I at least got to dive on the day of Christmas Eve. That was super cool. The whole week of Christmas, we actually got whale sharks and a false killer whale. Um, really incredible marine experiences during that week. So kind of made up for it, but um, yeah, it was really challenging. The next drawback on this list is that rural island life is something else. Um, so if you're working at a small conservation organization in a rural location like this, like in a small island in the Caribbean, it can be really challenging at times to have some of the creature comforts that you might be familiar with. A lot of those you don't get here. For example, here we don't have reliable power. We are in the middle of our lecture and the power just went out on the island for the third time in the past 24 hours. <laughs> and it is not as well. All the fans are off now. Um, it's been really great recently, but occasionally the power will go out from two to up to eight hours. I've seen it go up to 12 hours that we just don't have power. Sometimes it's in the middle of the night, um, so you don't have any fans or AC to keep you, keep you cool. And sometimes you need Wi-Fi and you just can't get it. Other things you have to deal with with living on a rural island is um, one reason why I'm sweating profusely right now is because I don't have AC. I do have an AC unit in my bedroom and I do turn that on at night, but I don't use it in here because it's extremely expensive and it is, yeah, it's not something that I am financially able to do. Living on the island, energy is also extremely expensive, comparable, if not ex far more expensive to um, develop places. You also have to deal with the heat, mosquitoes, and so many more things uh, living in a place like this. And you also, you don't get Amazon and you don't get so many, um, things that you just want to buy. It is really difficult at times, but it's something that kind of humbles you in a way. It's just something that you have to deal with if you're living in a rural place. You're not going to be able to have a super comfortable life. So know that if you're coming into a position like this. So those are all my drawbacks for this job and some things that you should definitely be aware of when looking into a job like this. I've really only scratched the surface of my experience within this job, so I'm going to have two more videos to further explain my experience within this role and paint the best picture that I can. So check out those videos right here if you are interested and looking at the pros of this job, um, as well as some of my biggest takeaways. So I will see you in the next video if you are gonna be there. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.